You turn in your King James Bible to Deuteronomy chapter 33. The question came up recently. Did Jesus have an eternal body? Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27. Because, see, the teaching goes, the Godhead doctrine is that Jesus is the body, the Father is the soul, the Holy Ghost is the Spirit, or the Holy Spirit is the Spirit. You could say it either way. Um, body, soul, spirit. Jesus, Father, Holy Spirit. Three and one. There aren't three of me standing here. Okay, I did a video about that if you want to see that, <laughs> making fun of the whole thing and how absurd it is. But uh, if the Godhead doctrine is true, then what was Jesus before he took on the body of, in the likeness of sinful flesh? Not sinful flesh, but in the likeness of sinful flesh. Corruptible flesh that he came down and he felt pain and he truly bled and everything else. What did he have before he came to the earth? Was he just sort of another spirit? There were two spirits in the Old Testament. Well, three, I guess, because the Holy Spirit the, is a spirit, obviously. And the, and the Father, I guess he would have to be a spirit. And then you have Jesus, I guess he would be a spirit. So in the Old Testament, there were three spirits. Now there's only one. Well, somewhat, you know. Uh, no, Jesus had a physical body in the Old Testament. Let me prove it. Deuteronomy chapter 33. You say, what, what about eternity, though? Let's look at this. The eternal God is thy refuge. Is God eternal? Well, if you believe the Bible, it says it pretty plainly right there in front of your face. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, destroy them. Um, eternal God, everlasting arms. Are these arms spirit? Are they soul? Or are they flesh? <laughs> Again, just believe what's written. There's everlasting arms connected to the eternal God. Was there a body in eternity? Uh-huh. Yes. Unless there was just, perhaps it was just the everlasting arms floating around. And there wasn't, you know, Jesus had to wait till later to get the, you know, the torso and the head and the legs and the feet. You know, apparently maybe it was just the everlasting arms just floated around through heaven. <laughs> uh, no, no, there would have been obviously an eternal body there. Okay, let us make man in our image, he says at the very beginning, the creation of the world. But it's just all spirit. No. Well, <laughs> But it doesn't come right out and say Jesus was had a physical body through all of eternity. Okay, funny, um, funny little bunny there. Does it say Jesus did not have an eternal body? See, it, 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 it's incredible when you deal with these philosophers. Um, there, you know, show me one verse of scripture where it says Jesus is God the Father. Hmm. Well, show me one verse of Scripture that says Jesus is not God the Father. <laughs> Answer the fool according to his folly, you know? Um, you can't prove that Jesus is the Father. That's blasphemy. How dare you? Show me one verse that says that. Okay, show me one verse that doesn't, or that says the opposite. One verse that says Jesus is not God the Father. Show me one verse. Go ahead. I'll repent. I'll become a, a twin Italian Um, there's everlasting arms, okay? They're connected to an everlasting body. The body changed, obviously. Does it, can I explain all of it? No, I can't explain all of that. There's, the mystery of godliness is great. God was manifest in the flesh. I don't know. I wasn't there. I just believe what the book says. There were everlasting arms connected to an everlasting body. They weren't just disembodied arms floating around forever. Um... Micah chapter 5, verse 2. Towards the New Testament, you have a bunch of books called the Minor Prophets. That doesn't mean they worked in silver mines or anything. <laughs> it's a little joke there. Is that, you know, see, I'm, I'm supposed to smile when I preach. 
you know, and that way it, it proves that I have, you know, joy or whatever else, I guess. So, you know, <laughs> because a preacher that doesn't smile can't be legitimate. Uh-huh. Uh, Micah chapter 5, verse 2. You can pause it and look it up if you're newly saved. Look up at the, you know, the beginning there, table of contents, and there's the page number you go to. Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Prophecy of Jesus Christ, his goings forth have been from everlasting. Except he just didn't have a body. He was just kind of a spirit that floated around waiting till he got, you know, a body or, you know, arms, I guess, floating around. Uh, no, no. Um, he was there from everlasting. His goings forth. He's walking around. Okay. Really difficult concepts here, I realize. Habakkuk. 112, they're in the Minor Prophets as well. Habakkuk chapter 1, go towards the New Testament. Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 12. Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord my God, mine Holy One? We shall not die. O Lord, thou hast ordained them for judgment, and, and O mighty God, thou hast established them for correction. Okay, um, the Holy One is from everlasting. Okay, you see it there? Mine Holy One, O Lord my God, art, uh, art thou from not from everlasting? O Lord my God, mine Holy One. Okay, mine Holy One. It's from everlasting. Go to the New Testament. Luke chapter 4. Is Jesus ever called the Holy One of God? You know, Jesus that had the body, you know, came here to the earth, you know, that that one there. Luke chapter 4, verse 33 through 36. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Hmm. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him, and heard him not. And they were all amazed, and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. I wonder why that would be. Probably because he's God. Holy and completely God. God is manifest in the flesh. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. See? Okay. Um, I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. You're the one that's there from eternity. You, you're everlasting. Except you look a little different now because, you know, now you have this body. I'm not used to seeing the body, you know, says the devil spirits. I, you were just kind of a, a phantom that lived up there, you know, the, the spirit that floated around, you know, the arms or whatever it was, you know, that, because there was no, there's no clear scripture saying that there's an eternal body. I don't understand how people can't get that. Obviously, Jesus took on a corruptible body of flesh when he came to the earth, but he had an incorruptible body before then. I mean, he's God. I think he could, you know, have a different bodies there. So weird. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, verse 13 through 15. Peter speaking to the Jews there. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One, reference to the Old Testament, and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the prince of life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. The Holy One. Hmm. He existed eternally. 
from everlasting, his goings forth. Hebrews 9, oh, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, we'll go there. Romans chapter 1, verse 19. And, then, you know, this study is not going to be definitive because it doesn't need to. You know, a lot of these guys, they have this thing of all they ever want to do is just sit there and let's talk about this. And let's go over all the scriptures and let's write thorough document, you know, documents and the huge big theological treatises and, and uh, all of these other things. You're wasting time. You don't need to know every single little possible thing and angle and whatever else. The Lord can reveal you that stuff to you over time, but you just look at the plain scriptures. Obviously, Jesus had a body in the Old Testament. We'll talk about it. Uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 19 through 23. Because that when they knew, excuse me, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Wait a second. The invisible things of him from the creation of the world? You mean uh, his body? What was the body of Jesus? What did he look like in eternity from the creation of the world? You know, let us make man in our image. Going to give man a physical body. He had a physical body, obviously. What's it say? The invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. They are without excuse. Who's the they? Verse 21, because that when they knew God, people in the first century, they glorified him not as God, Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart's heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Hmm, just like Trinitarians do. We're going to make depictions of Jesus. The Father, then the Son, they're both sitting there, you know, and they... You know, and all this stuff. And here's the little floaty bird above him with his light rays coming down. You know, beam me up or whatever else. No, no, no. What was the body of Jesus? What did it look like in eternity past? Well, I don't know. But I can say the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. And that what was clearly seen is what the people have seen down there. The word of God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was manifest. We have seen Him, our hands have handled. We've seen Him, we've touched Him. But He didn't have a body in the past or something, apparently. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. We'll see... I understand what you're saying, and you've certainly made some good points, but I need to be able to reconcile these beliefs with the theologians. I have to be able to make sure that the church uh, stands strong and whatever. And, and um, if the scriptures contradict the church, then the church is right. Gag a maggot. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Hmm. That's kind of an interesting thing. The spirit is also eternal. Through the eternal spirit? Hmm. So the Father is eternal, the Son is eternal, and the Spirit is eternal. Almost like the Godhead was there throughout eternity body, soul, spirit. We're not really sure. <laughs> Revelation chapter 1. If I could just see some clear scriptures. Well, right here they are. I don't see it. I, I know you're, you're pointing it to me, but I, I'm just not able to see it. Revelation chapter 1. 
beginning in verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Hmm, the angel of the Lord. Huh. All throughout the Old Testament. Physical body. You know, We'll get into that here in a minute. Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of, the, of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace be unto you and peace from him which is right now, which was and which is to come. Except in the past when he was, you know, well, that he didn't quite have a body then or whatever. <laughs> and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father. I love that one, God and his father. Hmm. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You say, well, wait a second though, Brian. See, it's God the Son because the Father is God the Father. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. See, that's where the Lord will get you, these false people. If you are truly saved and the Holy Spirit reveals things to you, the term God is interchangeable between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Not a problem. It's always referring to one God. It doesn't say God's or something. Uh, God and his father God or something. And it doesn't say that. There's only one God. Uh, let's see where I'm reading. Okay. Let's continue here. Uh, verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. So we know that there's a future fulfillment that Jesus has a body right now. Obviously. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. He didn't have a body in the past, but he does now. Then how could he make a statement like that? Well, he made it as, you know, that he was a spirit at one point, but now he's, you know, a body and... <laughs> Saith the Lord which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard a, behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. In the Spirit. It doesn't mean he was disembodied. Okay. So I'll post he's trying to come up with that. Well, it was just his spirit that got caught up. His body was just laying there on the island of Patmos, you know. And I'm like, What's going on with John? Did he die? No, he's just in the Spirit right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people um, verse 11 saying I am Alpha and Omega the first and the last and what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna and unto Pergamos and unto Thyatira and unto Sardis and unto Philadelphia and unto Laodicea and I turned to see the voice that spake with me and being turned I saw seven golden candlesticks and in the midst of the seven candlesticks one like unto the son of man clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven sh stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as, as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. Um, obviously, there's a body there. But if he didn't have a body in eternity past, why would he make a mention of that? You know, I am he that, you know, I which, which was, well, kind of technically, because I didn't originally have a body be, before I was, you know, went to earth and things and was created and at that point in time, I was just kind of there as a spirit that kind of floated, you know. No. And that body which John is seeing, it's not the same body which he was familiar with seeing when he was here on the earth. I don't think it's a big deal for the Lord to, you know, 
uh, change his body. Okay. But let's look about this thing of the Son of Man in the Old Testament. I'll show you a real good one here. Daniel chapter 7. Daniel 7. This is one of these uh, places in Scripture where the scholars just beat their brains out. They don't have a clue what this means. They have to surmise and all kinds of things like this. Um, remember, as we read through this passage, that God uh, is true of all three members of the Godhead. Okay, there's not, you can't just say, well, there's three different titles or whatever. No, they're all God. Okay, and you have separation between the body, soul, and spirit. But that doesn't mean they're three separate persons. And I'll show you a good one here. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. Let's begin there. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. Compare that to Revelation. We're dealing with the same being. He's called the Ancient of Days. Is he seeing a physical body? Is Daniel seeing a physical body? Uh huh, yes. Verse 11. I beheld then because of the voice of the, of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Huh? And they were given, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom, and that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld in the same horn, made war with the saints, and prevailed against them, until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time uh, came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Am I reading two here? Yeah, right there. Um, so, the Ancient of Days is on the throne, and one like the Son of Man comes up to him, and yet the Ancient of Days is who comes back at the second coming to destroy the Antichrist, basically, if you understand the passage. Huh? Well, you see, because the Ancient of Days and the Son of Man are the same being, but they can separate as body and soul. You see? See how that works? But now what do you do if it's two different persons? It gets a little confusing along those lines, doesn't it? Uh, well, you'd have to have the Ancient of Days being on the throne, and the Son of Man, well, that would obviously have to be Jesus, because God the Father's never called the Son of Man, but then it'd be the Ancient of Days, God the Father, on the throne, coming back and ruling and reigning on the earth, and not the Son of Man. Oh, what do you do with that if you're a Trinitarian? You have to philosophize some things. Start adding your own words and interpretations in there. Or you can just look and say, well, God the Father and the Son there, the Son of Man, you know, the Ancient of Days, the Son of Man, it's the same being. They just separate in terms of body and soul. Well, explain exactly, have you, were you there to see it? No, but I, uh, Daniel was. And I believe what's written here. It's just that simple. But uh, there's a body there in the Old Testament. 
And I don't think he'd be called the Ancient of Days or the, you know, whatever you want to say there, the Everlasting Arms, the all the different things. Uh, I don't think he'd be called that if, you know, the Holy One of God. I don't think there'd be that name there given if there's no body. So, but uh, we're not going to go to all these different places, but I'm going to show you four different things here. I have them written down. Um, about physical appearances, manifestations, you know, Christophanies or whatever they call it in the, uh, or theophany, not Christophany or something. I think it's called theophany or, you know, some man-made term, not in the Bible, but uh, to explain this whole thing. Jesus appears numerous times throughout the Old Testament in a physical body. First and foremost, you have Melchizedek in Genesis chapter 14, verses 18 through 20. And again, Trinitarians will break their neck on that whole thing. Well, you know, he couldn't be Melchizedek because, you know, without beginning of days, without father, without mother, and they don't understand. See, they're trying to separate. Jesus is a separate person than the father. No, you can speak completely about Jesus and the father and the Holy Spirit and still be talking about one being, one person. So you can say a whole bunch of different things there in Hebrews chapter 7 about Melchizedek and it all applies to Jesus. Okay? Because Jesus is God. Not that difficult. But he shows up physically in Genesis chapter 14, verses 18 through 20. Look it up. Again, I covered it in detail in my book. Um, God wrestled Jacob in Genesis chapter 32, verses 24 through 30. Again, covered in my book in better detail, showing that, you know, in, um, I think it's a, uh, I can't think of the verse reference right now, but it, in the Minor Prophets, it talks about, he says, you know, God wrestled with us, or excuse me, Jacob wrestled with us, plural. And yet there's only one man there that Jacob wrestles with. Did a video about this Trinitarian wing nut that came out and he said that Jacob actually wrestled with Lucifer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, he wrestled with God. Jacob says, I have seen God. He wrestles with a physical body in the Old Testament. Well, okay, he had the physical body, but it wasn't there in eternity. Where are you getting that at in Scripture? Where does the Bible say anything like that? He, yes, okay, he had a physical body that he could appear in in the Old Testament occasionally, but it, you know, it was created at some point in time, or he, you know, I don't really know, or you know, it's nonsense. The Son of God is said to be there in the fiery furnace in Daniel chapter 3, verse 25. I see four men loose. Didn't we throw three in there? There's four men loose, and the, the, form of the fourth is like the Son of God. He's seeing a physical body. Nebuchadnezzar. Another good one. The, Lord, the angel of the Lord to Manoah in Judges chapter 13, verses 1 through 22. Read that story. And he's there, and he's saying, how do we know that you're you know, a man of God here and whatever? And and he goes up in the flame and, and things. Read the story, like I said, if you want more information on it. Judges chapter 13, verses 1 through 22, just to give you the scripture reference again. And he says, we have seen God, not an angel or something like that. We've seen God. There's a physical body there. And at first he doesn't even believe that he's a, you know, the angel of God. He doesn't believe it. Prove to me. So it's not some kind of a, you know, angelic thing that comes down and levitates down and it's just kind of there and you can see through it it's sort of a spirit thing or no it's a regular man and he says you know prove to me who you are <laughs> Manoah does so does the bible openly say jesus had an eternal body in the old testament and it was there and you know whatever uh, well, there's no verse that says those exact words, no. But then there's no verse that says that he did not have an eternal body either. So if you're going to rely on your own philosophy, well, you're going to fail. Um, it doesn't work. Okay? Um, quit putting Jesus Christ down, you Trinitarians out there. Stop putting him down. Um, don't feel that this desire in you to put down the flesh of God. Um, all that that's doing really is proving that you have a problem with your own flesh so just so strange but uh i've been talking about my book the whole way through this thing and it's a good little book it took me a long time to write it um, because i was trying to get all my arguments exactly correct and everything 
Uh, you want to buy a copy of it, you can go to lulu.com, type the title in, you can go to amazon.com, uh, whatever. I don't have it on for sale on my website or anything, kingjamesvideoministries.com. I don't have it there, but uh, you know, Lulu is my publisher, so go there and buy a copy of it. Um, it really gets the arguments narrowed down. Um, just to give you an idea here, the table of contents. It has three sections, seven chapters in each. Did it that way on purpose. And you can see right there the, the different sections, what each one is about. Hopefully you can see that I can't see my screen too good. So, get a copy of it. Give it to all your Trinitarian friends. So, um, that is going to be it. And uh, some big studies coming up here, of course. There's always big studies coming up. You know, just when I think I get called up with the big studies, it, some stinking Bible believer writes me and asks me a question. I think, oh man, I have to do that now. <laughs> speaking sarcastically, um, or my wife and I, we get into a conversation, or I see something happening, and I, oh, I haven't done a sermon on that. All right, I'll do one more, Lord, just one more, and then I'm, you know, something else I'll do with my life. Or No, <laughs> it's been this way for years, and I thank the Lord for it. I understand I'm speaking sarcastically, but uh, that is going to be it. Um, don't let anybody destroy your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is God holy and completely God. Um, I believe the scripture is pretty clear. He had a body throughout all of eternity, and eternity includes backward and forward. Um, so, looking forward to seeing the physical body of my Lord and Savior someday. And uh, I hope you are too. So, that is going to be it, and we will see you in the next study. Thank you very much for watching.